Hi everyone, I'm Brett Drummond. I'm one of the co-founders and chief science communicators of MS Translate. And in this new series of videos, we're gonna be answering community questions about multiple sclerosis. And today's question was submitted to us as a direct message on Facebook and it comes from Alison. And Alison has asked, has there been any research done about repairing the blood brain barrier to prevent damage from occurring in multiple sclerosis? So it's a fantastic question, Alison, but before I get to answering that question, I think first I need to answer another question, and that is, what is the blood-brain barrier? So you can see in this image next to me, the blood-brain barrier is being represented as this glowing halo around the brain. However, I watched another video that did a really nice job of illustrating exactly what the blood-brain barrier is, and they explained it like this. If you think about blood vessels around the body, you can imagine them as looking a little bit like this. And you can see that I have all of these gaps between my fingers. And these gaps allow for the movement of cells and other molecules to go from the blood and into tissues. However, when we think about the cells that make up the blood brain barrier, they look a lot more like this. And you can see that those gaps have all almost disappeared. And so that makes it much more difficult for cells and other molecules to move from the blood and into the brain and the central nervous system. So why is this important in multiple sclerosis? Well, research has shown that one of the first things to occur in multiple sclerosis is actually the breakdown of that blood-brain barrier. And so essentially, the barrier becomes leaky and things are able to move from the blood vessels and into the brain and the central nervous system. And in MS, we're particularly interested in the movement of immune cells, so T cells and B cells across that barrier and into the brain, because we know these are the cells that cause the damage to the myelin sheath that we see in multiple sclerosis and which causes a lot of the clinical problems that we associate with MS. And so to go back to the original question, has any research been done around repairing that blood-brain barrier to stop that damage from occurring? Well, the short answer is yes. But in fact, a couple of the existing therapies that we have for multiple sclerosis rely on our knowledge of the role of the blood-brain barrier in multiple sclerosis for their mechanism of action. So Tysabri or Nataluzumab actually works by preventing those immune cells that we just talked about from being able to cross the blood-brain barrier and get into the brain and central nervous system. And so it does this by interacting with a molecule that we know helps the immune cells cross that barrier. Gelenia or Fingolimod has a number of ways that it exerts its benefits in multiple sclerosis, but one of those ways seems to be strengthening the blood-brain barrier, so restoring its function, making it less leaky. And so by doing that, it must have some way of then preventing those immune cells that we talked about from gaining access to the brain and central nervous system, and so helping to prevent that damage from occurring. So you can see that by understanding the blood-brain barrier and its role in multiple sclerosis, we've already been able to see the development of treatments that can take advantage of that knowledge and provide benefits to people living with multiple sclerosis. But in saying that, there is still a lot of research that's being done in this area. Now, there's more than I can talk about in this video alone, but I just want to highlight a couple of recent findings that I think are particularly interesting and exciting. So there's been research done by a team at Columbia University in New York, where they've identified pathways and molecules that seem to be particularly important in restoring the function of the blood-brain barrier in multiple sclerosis. So by having an understanding of those pathways and things that can inhibit those pathways, they may be able to modify that to help be able to restore that blood-brain barrier in people living with multiple sclerosis. That is, make that blood-brain barrier less leaky and stop immune cells from being able to get across and cause damage in MS. The other really exciting work that I think is being done in this area is in the generation of artificial blood-brain barriers. So a number of teams throughout the, this, around the world have published work suggesting that they've been able to create these artificial blood-brain barriers in the lab. Now, why is that important? Well, the better models that we have of this to work off, the better the research that we can do into it is. And in fact, it will mean that the more likely, there is a greater likelihood, sorry, of any research that is done in a laboratory setting of actually being effective once it's taken into clinical trials. 
So I think there is some really interesting work being done in this area. Hopefully that answers your question a little bit, Alison. If anyone else has any other questions around this topic, feel free to comment below the video and I'll be more than happy to respond to them. Otherwise, stay tuned across all of our channels for the next in this series of videos, which will be published next week. Thanks everyone.